Well, hi everyone. I'm John Rithlin with a retro review of Hulk Hogan vs. Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6. WWE Champion Hulk Hogan, Intercontinental Champion Ultimate Warrior, two baby faces, fan favorites clashing, drawing a bunch of fans to the Toronto Sky Dome, and my God, was the crowd electric on that night. And as somebody that at the time was a fan of both guys, I didn't know who the fuck to cheer for. I don't think anybody knew who the fuck to cheer for, whether you were, you know, in your 20s or 30s, whether you were a kid like me. It didn't really matter whether you were older in your 20s and 30s and watching wrestling and enjoying it. You didn't know who the fuck was going to win because this was not necessarily a first time ever. Baby faces, you know, top baby faces that clashed before, Bruno San Martino, Pedro Morales, and, you know, in other promotions as well, that has happened. But on this scale, grandest stage of them all, and two champions, what the fuck was going to happen. And it was title for title. A lot of people forget it was title for title. Now, with this, though, to figure out how we got to this monumental moment and Vince McMahon capturing lightning in the bottle, we have to go back in history, you know, a couple years before, and figure out, you know, the build and everything, and figure out how these two got to this point. Now, beyond, I'm not going to recount Open Warriors, beginnings in the business, beyond he eventually got signed by Vince McMahon after working you know, various promotions. I believe he worked, if I'm right, a little bit in Memphis with Sting. They worked in Mid-South. He would work as a dingo warrior in, um, you know, world class for a bit. And then we get signed by Vince in 87, you know, like later 87. And would, you know, wrestle on house shows and stuff like that. And they were building it because they could, you could tell he had something. I mean, as, as much of a piece of shit as both guys were, they had that charisma and they had that magnetism to draw you in. So Ultimate Warrior gets signed and you know, sometime in 87, makes owl show appearances, that kind of stuff, syndicated TV. And meanwhile, Hogan is in the midst of a four-year run as WWE champion. He would lose that to um, Andre the Giant on the big event, Saturday night's main event. You know, uh, the double Hepners, Earl and Dave. How much did the plastic surgeon cost, Mean Gene? Or how much did they pay for the plastic surgery? Whatever the fuck it was. It was just kind of funny. Hogan overacting, acting like such a goddamn baby. It was kind of hilarious. Even for a seven-year-old me, I was like, you know, Hogan's kind of done some some crap things before and even as a even as a kid I wasn't blind to that and I'm like you know he kind of I was like I mean Andre I mean because I liked Andre even as a heel I want to see Andre be champion but then the title got stripped and they built to um they built to uh Wrestlemania 4 which was going to be the tournament Hogan and Andre did the you know double count out disqualification finish and while this is going on, Hogan helps Savage win the championship because Hogan always had to be in Randy Savage's shadow or overshadow him. And because there was less pay-per-views at the time, Savage would compete on house shows against, like, um, you know, Ted DiBiase. He would have some great matches, as Randy Savage always could. Um, they teamed up at uh, SummerSlam 88. And, you know, then would be, you know, Survivor Series 88. They would do that stuff. <laughs> so... Savage is still champion. Hogan, of course, they're forming the mega powers and everything. And, you know, again, Hogan over trying to overshadow Randy Savage. Though Randy Savage was better. I will always maintain that Randy Savage was better than Hulk Hogan. So, that being said, that's what Hogan's doing. He's teaming with the uh, the champion because he has to stay in the limelight. And meanwhile, what's Warrior doing? Well, he wasn't really doing all that much in, like, you know, the beginning of 88. He would, um... He would face Hercules at uh, WrestleMania 4, power for pow power battle. This is a better match than expected, I suppose. Hercules is a pretty good worker. They did dumb him down compared to his work in Mid-South. But the match wasn't that bad. And also, it was like, it at least was a non-tournament match. But then, he would, you know, still make his appearances and do the syndicated TV stuff. Honky Tonk Man was the Intercontinental Championship at the time. Was going to face, I believe, Brutus Beefcake, but... Uh, Something happened. Bruce PK could not be there. I think it was an injury angle to write him off, or maybe he was legit injured. But they had um, Ultimate Warrior make a surprise appearance and be the open challenge. And he, you know, Honky Tonk Man, bring somebody out here. I don't care who the hell it is. And Ultimate Warrior would squash him in a few seconds. And as big of a piece of shit as Ultimate Warrior was, <clears throat> I did enjoy seeing Honky Tonk Man get squashed. Because Honky Tonk Man was a terrible worker and a terrible champion. And one of the worst Intercontinental Champions of all time. Not greatest. Because... Just because he held it for that many months does not mean he was one of the greatest. He held it for over a year, and I was really hoping Miz would break that back in 2016 and in 2017. But no, we can't have nice things. Anyway, hopefully somebody does at some point. But uh, after Warrior became Intercontinental Champion, he would feud with uh, Honky Tonk Man still. They would face off on respective teams at Survivor Series 88. And, 
you know, so Hogan and Warrior are the mean positioned as guys. Uh, we had Hogan in the Rumble in 89, and he's at, he accidentally dumps Randy Savage, the WWF champion, out at the time. We get the tease, tensions, what's going to go on? Oh, no, these two guys are going to explode. The mega powers explode. They would later explode in Saturday Night's main event, where Savage says there's lust in your eyes for Elizabeth, and he would go nuts and would lose to Hogan at WrestleMania 5 because, of course, he fucking would. I mean, why the fuck wouldn't you maybe have Randy Savage retain and build to Hogan uh, winning at, say, SummerSlam so Savage could have had, uh, you know, a year-and-a-half-long title reign or at least close to it. Nope, they had to have Hogan win, and he did. And then he would um, th he would feud into SummerSlam 89. It would kind of cool off that feud. And then Hogan would, you know, wrestle Ted DiBiase as well, world champion, and they would face off on respective teams at Survivor Series 89. Meanwhile, Ultimate Warriors, the Intercontinental Champion, has that super pose down with Rick Rude and stuff like that, and they're just, it's ridiculous. Jesse Ventura uh, joking about it and everything, and they, they would kind of screw over Warrior there. And then they would screw over Warrior again at WrestleMania 5, where... Bobby Heenan would hold um, Warrior's foot down <coughs> while the referee didn't see. One, two, three, Rick Rude would become the new Intercontinental Champion, and then Warrior would abuse Bobby Heenan, hurt his neck and stuff like that, and Warrior's like, oh, you know, I don't care. Piece of shit that he was, but focusing on the character. We, um, you know, we, so we have a new Intercontinental Champion, and Rick Rude, and he would regain it at SummerSlam 89, and he would uh, team against the Heenan family at Survivor Series 89 because he was also facing off against Andre the Giant on house shows. And then we get to 1990, and this is where things get interesting because the the big moment that people remember is uh, 1990 Royal Rumble. Warrior was in at like, what, 17 or 18? I think 18. I think he was in 18 at the <coughs> Rumble. And he's having the stuff. He's the Intercontinental Champion. He eliminates uh, Ted DiBiase with one big clothesline after a bit. Um... He might have actually been in a little bit later in that, but also Hogan comes in a little bit later, and it was, they toss out, I believe it was Tito Santana, Rick Martel, or I think it was Rick Martel and then Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels got tossed out within like a few seconds, and suddenly it's like they're facing off, and it's like, you know, and Tony Schiavone, and I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it because I watched this uh, show recently, but Tony Schiavone's like, my God, there is not a person sitting down. Everyone is on their feet. And everybody was, and the floor was actually shaking from how loud people were. <clears throat> I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Like, you can tell even on camera, not being there live at the arena, how loud the crowd was. And all they did was, you know, just some bumps into each other, and they did a crisscross, and they did a clothesline thing, and that was it. And then they would build it where they would team up. Warrior would save Hogan, but it would be obvious that these two titans were going to clash because Hogan would eliminate Warrior from the Rumble accidentally, Warrior would then come back in, save Hogan, essentially, and then run off. And it would build up with promos, Warriors making absolutely no goddamn sense. It's like, you know, it's like I'm talking about um, taking the plane of Hulkamania and driving it into the ground or something like that. That's essentially what he... You would have to watch uh, Ultimate Warrior's promos leading to WrestleMania six to understand what he's saying. And if you do understand, please let me know in the comments, because even to this day, even as a kid, I didn't understand. Even as an adult, I don't understand. But... We're building up all this stuff. The two titans, two titles on the line. And the match for what it was, was pretty goddamn good. It was, you know, it was a great display of, like, you know, power for power. It was both guys not willing to give an inch. Um, Hogan hurting his knee and saying his knee's gone. Oh, he can't, you know, he can't make it. But then suddenly he could. It was like he was feigning an injury to gain sympathy. And then, you know, Warriors battling him and stuff like that. They had... Some moves that you wouldn't expect those guys to pull out. And it was not a technical classic by any stretch of the imagination, but my God, with that crowd interaction and the eventual win, like Hogan went for the leg drop, Warrior hit the splash, one, two, three, and then Hogan kicked out like three and a quarter because Hogan just can't stay down long enough. And then he presents the title to Warrior and lets him, and lets everybody know, hey, by the way, you know, I'm still the guy. This guy may be the champion, but I'm the guy. And he raised his hand and Warrior got his pyro and his celebration and everything, but Hogan looked more like the star, the dejected star, but the star nonetheless. And then from there, what would actually happen? Hogan would actually take most of the summer off. He would get uh, beat up and taken out by Earthquake, would face off against him at uh, SummerSlam 90. They would have their <coughs> run-ins uh, throughout, throughout house shows. And then, you know, there would be uh, Survivor Series 1990, where 
Hogan and Warrior would end up, you know, having a stare down. Oh, could we see that match again? Could we possibly see that? And then at the 91 Rumble, Hogan would win after eliminating everybody, including Earthquake, having a little match within a match. And then in 1990, you're looking at what Ultimate Warrior did. Ultimate Warrior would feud with Ted DiBiase and would feud, I assume maybe would feud with um, Randy Savage. I don't remember all the house show stuff right there. But he would feud with people and then he would feud with Rick Rude. They would carry that feud that they had had um, the previous year. And it was Rick Rude's last appearance or last pay-per-view appearance for WWE as he would leave a couple months later. They had a steel cage match at SummerSlam 1990. Ultimate Warrior would win. Even though uh, Rude was busted open and it seemed like Warrior cut the match short just to get out there, mock Rude, and then leave, it was what it was. And then <clears throat> Warrior would not defend his championship at Survivor Series 90. He would be part of the elimination matches. And then the ultimate, uh, like the ultimate Survivors match, I believe, it would be him on a team of three against five other Survivors and stuff like that. And of course, the baby faces would go over to send everybody home happy. Hooray! And then. We get to Royal Rumble 91, where he would lose to Sergeant Slaughter. Randy Savage would just run out and just blindside Warrior and then hit him with the lights and just, like, totally trip over everything. It was just absolutely great. But he would lose to Sergeant Slaughter after Randy Savage hit um, Warrior with the scepter. And then that would lead to that match at WrestleMania 7, retirement match. Randy Savage would lose. Ultimate Warrior would win. Savage would have to retire, unfortunately. Uh, but he wanted to retire. And then Ultimate Warrior... Would end up leaving the company soon after SummerSlam 91. So, yeah, all that build for that championship was nothing. But also, then Hulk Hogan would regain the championship, beating Sergeant Slaughter at WrestleMania 7, and would go on to have another, you know, like, eight-month run until he lost it to Undertaker. So, really, the culmination of it was WrestleMania 6. Warriors title reign was fine. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. But it wasn't bad. And then Hogan would take a few months off and stuff like that, film movies, do all that. And that's really where we have it at. But I can't, you know, encompass just, you know, properly how great the reactions were for Hogan and Warrior at WrestleMania 6. The buildup from the Rumble to that uh, mania. It was really goddamn exciting. It was a really great time to be a fan. So if you guys haven't checked that out, please check that out. Let me know what you guys think. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of the video. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.